When I was a kid, I heard Fleetwood Mac for the first time and I fell in love with it. I thought they were the greatest band I had ever heard in my life. And then my dad got me tickets to see them live and I saw them and then it, that changed my life. And a few years ago, I was doing original music, was getting really bored with it, playing the same venues, playing the same towns, and I wanted to do cover songs. And so I called up Alex to see if he was interested. So what do you think about Fleetwood Mac? And he goes, that's a great idea. Let's try it out. And we had no idea that it would turn into what it is today, which is a tribute band where we're on the road every single weekend. When Alex asked me to be in the band, I told him that it was a golden idea. I absolutely wanted to be part of it. Fleetwood Mac is a band that I have always loved. I've always respected every member of the band. And to try to pull that off would be something I desperately wanted to attempt. First time I heard Mackenzie sing Dreams, uh, her first rehearsal, her vocal delivery was incredible and really sounded like Stevie Nicks. And I knew then, within about 20 seconds, that we had something. The tribute band is a band that dresses, acts, looks, sounds exactly the part that they're playing. And you're sticking to the truth of what you're playing, which kind of makes our shows different than most other tribute bands because we try to make it an experience. We want you to leave feeling like you got to see Fleetwood Mac today, but also feel like you saw them back in the 70s. And we get that a lot. We have a lot of people say it feels like I just saw Fleetwood Mac in 1978, and that's the whole point and what we do as a tribute band. The song Dreams is an interesting song because a lot of people don't realize that it is Fleetwood Mac's only number one U.S. hit. And when I got to see Stevie Nicks last November, I learned that, and I had never known that before. I've read every book about her and every article, everything you could possibly know about Stevie Nicks, I had to learn because you can't really be a true tribute if you don't know the part that you're playing. And young and old, everybody loves that song, and there's a reason why it's the only number one hit song by Fleetwood Mac.
So about two years ago, I got a phone call from Alex who had just gotten off the phone with our booking agent and his words exactly to me were, are you sitting down? And he goes, well, I know how much you like Hall and Oates. How do you feel about playing Daryl's house? And I went, like Daryl's house, Daryl's house? And he said, yes. And immediate tears burst from my eyes. I just cried and could not stop crying. And about six months later, we're in the van on the way to New York and we are at Daryl's house in Pauling, New York. And it was the most incredible experience of my life and I will never forget it. So we do this fun sing-along during Go Your Own Way that Fleetwood Mac does not do. And I haven't seen any other tribute band to Fleetwood Mac do this. The reason why we decided to do this is because after we played Daryl's House and we got our Gold Dust Woman video, it went up online and immediately had 10,000 views. And we got interest from Epcot's Sounds of Summer series down in Disney World. And so we played Disney World we decided at the last minute, why don't we get the audience to sing along with us on Go Your Own Way? And they had this awesome catwalk. And me and Doug went out at, with our microphones and we sang the one part and then we got the audience to sing it back to us. And it just turned into this thing that we enjoyed so much that we were like, we have to keep doing this. It's fun. It was awesome and it reminds us of being at Disney World and what an incredible experience that was. The West, Japan, Europe, absolutely.